Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to F124. Finally, we are here for the setup guide, and well, it's been long, long waiting, long time in the making as well. Finally, I think the patches have settled down a little bit. No more handling changes as of well as of today, from what I've heard. So uh, later today, there's going to be another patch, of course, 1.7. And uh, well, uh, it's no more handling changes. But there you go. That aside, we're back, and this is gonna be the setup guide for iPhone 24. How to set up your car very quickly. If you love what we're doing over here, always appreciate a like, a subscribe as well. Leave your comments if you need any assistance, and uh, if you need um, further assistance, you can always join the Discord server. Links in the description, and uh, it's a fun community we have over here as well. And uh, I'll see you there. Now let's get into the setup here let's go back to the garage and take a look at the setup options that we have for this year so a few new things but majority they are the same they, they are carrying over from the previous game in f123 if you're new to f124 then you know just forget all the reference about f123 um there you go and uh we have the aerodynamics which is front wing and rear wing it's the same except that you will notice that you'll need a lot more front wing gap this year transmission we have the same on throttle and off throttle with uh, increased range right so you can go from uh, previously you can only go from 50 to 100 now you can go from 10 to 100 which is a good thing to have and off throttle also the same you can go from 10 all the way to 100 now previously was only 50 to 100 engine braking this is new for this year's game you can go all the way from 0 to 100 0 means no engine braking involved 100 percent means allow the engines to do quite a bit of the braking as well to slow down the car all right front camber rear camber front toe rear toe the same thing as last year uh, but you know there's fundamental changes in how you want to set up your car in this suspension it's the same thing right uh, front suspension you can go from 1 to 41 same as the rear uh, the anti-roll bars 1 to 21 same as last year and then right height you get a little bit more flexibility last time out you can only go down to 30 on the front right height and now you can go all the way down to 10 and this is um, at least from what the developer said it's uh, one click equals to one mm of right height right and uh, one mm is just you know one tenth of one centimeter so that's very very small changes being done but you know in a real formula one car uh, even one mm gives you a lot of downforce when you set it up correctly so 30 on the front 70 on the rear that's just the uh, default here so you can go all the way down to 10 and you can still go up to 40 so far well whereas on the rear previously uh, you can last time last time it always started at 30 but now in this game it starts at 40 minimum right height and you can go all the way up to 100 which is well, quite a big jump actually uh, you'll probably see somewhere around 60 70 maybe 50 at some tracks brake pressure brake bias is the same as last year except the default setup for some reason is set to 97 i will come over that very shortly brake bias the same thing as last year you can run a little bit lower compared to last year for more corners in more tracks tire pressures have changed quite a bit compared to last year um, there's also in an increased range of the tire pressures um, but also how they work right in last year's game lower tire pressure equals to lower tire temperature but this year it's the opposite so we'll talk about it very shortly so let's get started and um, very quickly a quick shout out to our channel members and our patrons as well thank you for being uh following for, for being a special follower of the channel uh yeah appreciate your support and uh, you guys might be seeing this much earlier than anyone so sure enjoy this now let's get into it so front wing the more you have the more grip you have on the front similarly when you increase your rear wing you get more grip on the rear right that's the fundamental of any race cars uh, any uh, aerodynamic based race cars like an f1 car when you lower your down uh, lower your wings you lower the downforce 
you get more top speed, right? So in Monza, for example, you, you can even run 0-0, uh, you can even run something like 20-0, 15-0, 10-0. A lot of possibilities are available here. What about the wing gap? Uh, what's a wing gap that we always hear when people talk about it? The wing gap is how much more front wing that you have compared to the rear. So if you have 20-0, that's a wing gap of 20. If you have 25 in your setup, that's a wing gap of 15, right? Um, this year, uh, just to keep it simple, you definitely need a lot more front, front wing gap to make up for the downforce that's produced on the car. But it's not going to cost you that much drag. The front wing is super efficient. And what I mean by that is, let's say, um, let's say we go down all the way to 0, 0 again. If you increase five or six clicks of downforce on the front, right? The drag generator is only equal to about one click of rear wing. So the front wing produces very less drag, but at the same time, it produces more downforce. So it's a lot more efficient. Rear wing in comparison is less efficient to the front wing, right? But rear wing gives you the stability you need on the rear end as the be beginning of your setup. So. Uh, well, uh, in high downforce track like Spain, maybe uh, Monaco, Hungary, well, you're probably running like 50, 40, 50, 50, those, those kind of things. Low aero track like Miami, uh, Monza, Spa even, right? Vegas, you'll be running very low downforce, similar to like this probably, yeah? Uh, yeah, around, just around there. So you're going to be running probably around uh, 10 wing gap to begin your setup if you're just starting out to test your setup but if you're super confident say for example uh, maybe you're in Miami right um, start off with 20 10 there's a 10 wing gap over there and if you feel like you need more downforce you can always go up to 25 you can go up to 30 it is very flexible this year all right now we move on to transmission here what does on throttle do well basically when you go on throttle <laughs> uh, when you hit the accelerator uh, this takes effect right when you lower your on throttle it's gonna allow your car to rotate a little bit more under acceleration but it's not gonna give you any better traction right so it's better to rotate the car whereas when you go higher it's better to give you traction out of the corner so when you're taking corners, for example, out of Monza Turn 2, which is a slow corner, uh, you want to get a very good exit. You may want to use somewhere around 80, 90, 95, or 100% on throttle. You can adjust this from your MFD. So you get a better exit and uh, potentially gain a little bit more time there. You can run it lower as well, especially in the rain. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't over-rotate the rears and it's usually quite understeery in the rain to get grip so uh, maybe you can start off with 40% 50% to begin with but otherwise I'd say uh, there's no point I think running any lower so you can always stick to 80 or 90 or 100% all the time maybe once you have a little bit of tire wear in your car uh, then you want to drop it to about 90 maybe 80 maybe gradually down to 70 if you're doing a very very long stint right uh, but go as you feel if you feel like the car is sliding when you put down power quite aggressively, uh, then you try to reduce it a little bit. But if that oversteer still happens, then it's just the tires are losing grip naturally. So drive safer. <laughs> All right, that's the tip I can give. Okay, off throttle. Since this year, we can go all the way down to 10. I'd say for most of your setups, you want to start at 50 if you're just playing around with your setups uh, because this is the midway point. It's not too oversteery, not too understeery. You don't want to go too high because then it's going to give you understeer, especially in uh, high speed corners. You want it as low as possible. But there's, uh, there's some hidden tricks here. You can use your off throttle and engine braking and your brake bias together, right? To find the correct characteristics of your car under the brakes or when you're off throttle. So let's speak about the engine braking which is uh, 0 or 100, which do you want to use? Well, the answer is always 100. At least for qualifying, you want to be using 100%. So you can slow down the car much faster in heavy braking, uh, even in light braking zone or corners where you just have to lift off a little bit. 
uh, this is going to help your car to turn right and you can apply power much faster you get less and you get less understeer as well which is pretty good thing now let's say uh you've already uh, gone up all the way to 57 brake bias right and you're still locking up your rear this is where the off throttle comes in useful comes in handy you can increase your off throttle to control the behavior of your car under the brakes or when you're not on the throttle so somewhere around 50 percent is pretty safe to use in all tracks but um i was experimenting with 10 percent earlier with, on the monza setup seems to work fine you know 100 10 100 with 57 brake bias and a little bit of adjustment with the front arrow and it works out for me but i haven't fully tested it in a 50 percent race which is uh, quite a long thing to do so i'll come to that when the monza setup comes out so as a beginning you want to use maybe around 80 50 i'd say it's safe and then 100 percent engine braking that's your starting point for making a setup in a race you can reduce the engine braking maybe just one or two clicks down to 80 or 90 so it's less over siri um, and then off throttle you can keep it the same or you can reduce it five or ten percent also if you want to right on throttle just use 80 90 100 whichever you like and you're good to go now suspension geometry last year in f123 you would be running something like this right 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 left left right that means a uh, front camber all the way to the right front toe and rear toe all the way to the left so uh that was the fastest way in that game but unfortunately that was wrong right uh, if you want to go faster through corners you usually need to add camber which fortunately this game has fixed that <laughs> not saying this game is perfect by any means but uh, at least this thing is correct in in some ways right so you want to be running minimum well i'm not saying minimum but actually maximum negative camber here and minimum toe or you can say all the way to the left for everything so when you have more negative camber to the left it's going to give you more grip when you're going through corners but when you have less pos uh, less negative camber so more to the right for example just take middle for example you're going to have more grip under the brakes and under acceleration but it's not really useful to run uh, any any anything around the middle so maybe all the way to the left if you need some adjustment you can do two clicks one click but from what i found running it minimum on the camber works just nicely uh, whereas for the toe you still want to run minimum because that's uh, again a little bit more stable front toe maybe you can add a little bit if you want the front end to respond much sharply into a corner like you throw a car into a corner and it turns much faster but at the expense of that it's going to be a little bit unstable mid corner and exit so if you can deal with that go for it if you can't deal with that run with minimum you're pretty much having a good setup the front end in this game is very very pointy there's no point adding one more toe if you need to Whereas on the rear, you can actually add a little bit of rear toe in at say probably 0 0.1 maximum, maybe even 0 0.2 at certain tracks, very, very limited tracks like Baku, right? Uh, the reason for that is it increases the stability of your rears when you increase your rear toe in. Um, but the downside is if you increase your rear toe in, it may reduce the amount of turning that you get into a corner. So a little bit more understeer. So to the right, understeer to the left oversteer keep it minimum and uh, adjust everything else to get your baseline going first now suspension when we're talking about suspension we'll have to talk about the suspension and right height together uh, very specifically the front suspension and front right height works together rear suspension and rear right height works together as well so when you start off with the front suspension you want to be running it as stiff as possible in this game believe it or not even at the stiffest value the car is still feeling like very soft like a spring sometimes right uh, it's just too soft but uh, this is the best way so far to run the run the car setup on the front suspension maximum it's going to give you more confidence in the front end of your car it's a lot more predictable so if you flick the car into a corner you can predict 
what the car is going to do it's not going to suddenly lose the back end or front end right uh, and it's a lot more stable you can run one or two clicks three clicks lower if you need just a little bit more rotation in the car in slow speed high speed in general right but start off with 41 since the game is still very new uh, I, I don't see a point of running it any lower but feel free to experiment and let us know the result uh, eventually as I'm going through all the tracks uh, you know you may see uh, I'm trying different combinations of uh, suspension and ride height uh, speaking of the front let's go on to the front ride height when you have a stiff front suspension you need to run a low front ride height to increase the performance increase the downforce that you get the lower you go the more downforce it can generate but at high speed when you're going uh, on the straight when you have the front ride height too low it's going to script the floor you'll have that cr 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 sound uh, that's going to cause bottoming out and that's going to reduce your overall top speed so and you're not going to gain any more speed in the corners because your front is too low you're not having airflow on the underbody so so far what i found is like monza i can run 18 or 20 at the safe level so um so around 20 to 25 seems to be the sweet spot uh, in most tracks um uh, and you don't want to go any lower than that maybe certain tracks some slow tracks where you don't have to take curbs maybe you can run a little bit lower but that again depends on uh, how you set up your front suspension as well so if you're running maximum front suspension you can start off your front ride head at 20. if you want it a bit safer you can go up to 25 right but if you go too high you're going to lose top speed also because the car is now too high from the ground there's more drag being generated and uh, the car is going to be feeling quite sluggish in all types of corners so lower equals to potentially more downforce potentially more top speed but if you go too low then you're losing all that so somewhere around 20 25 is where you want to start now let's talk about the rears it's quite the opposite to the front where you the front usually you want it stiff and low the rears you usually want it soft and high in this game at least you can still run stiff and low in this game for example if you want to run minimum rear ride height to get more top speed you need to run somewhere around 15 or 20 rear suspension so that the rear doesn't bottom out right again it's like a spring right if you go if you go very stiff it's going to reduce the movement on the rear and it's going to give you more rotation so but since this game uh, already has a lot of grip on the front end uh, you don't need to rotate the rear too much so you can run the rear very soft start off with one rear suspension it's pretty good um, in uh, all types of corners and start off at about 60 rear ride height is pretty safe for all tracks i'm saying safe because well there's a difference here safe and fast are not the same thing right safe means you can just take this into a setup and then drive out and you'll be fine but if you need to be faster you need to fine tune it so if you want the rear to be lower and gain top speed sure go for it as long as you're not losing the car in high speed corners or corner exits you're fine you can even go as slow as 50 45 sometimes but again experiment with it and find out if you are struggling with it when you go higher though it's going to increase the rake angle of your car right so that's similar to the front wing gap that we talked about uh, this also works like the wing gap when you have more rear ride height compared to the front you have more rake in the car that's going to give you more rotation the car is going to turn in more easily in especially in slow speed you'll notice that a lot but if you go too high let's say you go around 80 90 uh, the car will definitely turn but it will turn too much and also you will have a lot of drag on the straight so you'll lose a lot of top speed sweet spot in this game i'd say if you're running minimum rear suspension you can run around 60 to 70 at max right but if you are increasing your rear suspension then you can start going down to maybe uh, a little lower as well from what i tested i can run one rear suspension and 50 
rear right height in Monza. It may not be true for all tracks, uh, hence why I'm saying start off at 60, which is a safer point here. Okay, we're done with the suspension and right height. Let's talk about the anti-roll bars. This here, they solely control the right, uh, not the right, the roll of the car. So, for example, if you turn right, the car will tilt to the left. And the opposite also true. When you turn left, the car tilts to the right. So, for example, now uh, into turn one in Monza, I'm turning right. So, there's the car is going to be leaning towards the left hand side a little bit, right? If I soften my uh, roll bars in general, right? That's going to allow the left hand side to lean a lot, but that's going to cause the car to be sluggish when you want to force it to turn. So if you want the car to turn, you need to run stiffer anti-roll bar overall, right? So in this game, uh, again, it doesn't make sense, but you'll have to run 21, 21 anti-roll bars. That will allow your car to turn in very easily. And uh, the downside of that is it may feel a little bit oversteery. So to fix that, you can actually just reduce the re-entry roll bar maybe to 18 or I'd say minimum you go is 15. So if you're struggling on the rear grip on the exit of corners, just drop it down to 15 and then play around with that range from there on. Right. Why you do not want to be going softer? Well, if you try this out, no matter how, whatever combination you use, on the softer range, the car is very sluggish. You throw it into a corner, you try to do whatever you can with the brakes on the throttle or the steering, it's going to be very sluggish to turn in and it's going to lose your lap time on entry and it's going to lose your lap time in the mid corner and subsequently because of that you will lose time on the straights. So to keep it simple, start off with 21, 21. If you want it safer, you run it at 21, 15 and you're a good, uh, you're, you're a good, good level here to start off. If you need more rotation, you can increase your rear roll bar. If you need less rotation, well, you can actually reduce the rear roll bar or you can uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, reduce your front wing, for example. That's a lot of ways you can adjust it. Now, let's go to brakes. I hope you understood uh, suspension. It is very complicated, so if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. I will respond to it and explain as best as I can without overcomplicating things, right? Uh, I may make follow-up videos as well to explain the differences, the changes that each of these do. But you'll see a lot of this being discussed in individual track guides and setups, which will be coming very, very soon. Um, starting Tuesday, I will have a spa setup coming out. So brakes, uh, you saw the preset setup they run at 97. You want to be running it at 100% all the time. Okay, uh, that's that's the rule here. It's not even a rule, it's an order, right? You have to follow this, if not, uninstall the game. 100% brake pressure is the way to go. The only time I will say you can use a little bit lower brake pressure, uh, maybe around 97 or 98, is when you have a full wet race or full wet qualifying and you have Park Fermi turned off. So you can play around with your entire setup. Uh, in that condition, Let's say if it's a full wet race or full intermediate race, you can actually run 97 or 98 and it will reduce the chances of front lockups and rear lockups in the car, which is going to give you more confidence under the brakes in the wet conditions and, you know, that's lap time. If you're fine, just run 100% all the time. Now, if you have, uh, you know, high speed corners, you usually want to be running very low brake bias. So, for example, if you go to Silverstone, um, you have maggots and backgates. You can run 50, 51, 52 brake bias. Stow corner, 52 should be enough. Uh, and then when you go to the last chicken, you want to run 55 or 54, right? So slower corners, you want to run higher brake pressure. Heavy braking, you want to run more brake pressure. Uh, brake bias, sorry. So like turn 1 Monza, turn 4 Monza, you run 57 or 56. In the rain, you want to increase it just 1% more, so maximum of 58, so that you don't lock up the rears. Front lockups are much more easier to manage than a rear lockup. If you lock up the rear, you're going to spin, you're going to lose more time. 
if you lock up the front, at least you're running wide and you can still regen the track safely, right? So you get the idea why you want it to be safer. But again, you know, this is your personal preference. If you're comfortable at a certain level, go for it. Um, you know, if you find a lap time, go for it. I'll be happy for you. Um, slow corners, yeah. Um, well, not slow corners, high speed corners or light braking. You want to use lower brake pressure, uh, lower brake bias so around 52, 53. I'd say it's a safe point in qualifying, like for example, Parabolica, Ascari Chicane. You can actually use 50% uh, depending on your setup, right? Uh, so feel free to experiment with it and find what suits you. Sometimes you need to adjust it from corner to corner to gain lap time in qualifying. And that's it for brakes. Let's head into tires. Some would say it's controversial, some would say it's funny, some would say it's bleh. I don't know. But to make it easy, let's talk about what you need to do in this year's game. You can always run the default pressures here, which is a uh, uh, 2 psi higher than the minimum right the minimum on the front is 22.5 so you're running 2 psi higher whereas the rear is minimum is 20.5 and you're running 22.0 it's a okay level to run at right um, you can use this as a baseline for your setups and uh, see if your tires are overheating and also for the race for any race actually wets or dries a long race, short race, you want to be running maximum tire pressures because this will reduce your tire temperature in this year's game. Don't ask me why, this is just how it's coded in the game. So, maximum tire pressures equals to minimum tire temperatures. Uh, it will reduce your tire temperature, allowing you to keep your tires cooler for longer. Hence, you know, helping you to get more confidence in the car. For qualifying, however, you can actually run maybe somewhere in between. So you can start off at 26.0 on the front. Sorry, 26.5, which is the middle. And then uh, you can run about, uh, sorry, it's 26.0 on the front, 3.5, yeah. And then you can run also around the middle, which is uh, 23.5, was it? Yeah on the rear so this is going to allow your tires to warm up much quicker right when you lower the tire pressure it's going to allow your tires to warm up much quicker if you're weaving correctly and you are going at a good speed right but at the same time uh, if you keep this up for too long it may overheat your tires in the race so only use this for qualifying if you need to and uh, the benefit of using lower pressure is you also get more grip in slow speed corners. So for turn 1, 2 in Monza, turn 3, 4, you'll notice there's an increase in grip. But when you head to the second sector, the Lesmos, uh, Scary Chicane and Parabolica, the high speed corners of the track, right? You'll notice that the car is a little bit lazy to turn in. So to counter that, you may want to run higher tire pressures. So somewhere like Spa, Spain, well, Spa, Spain, and also maybe Silverstone, where there's a lot of high speed corners. Majority is high speed corners. You want to run more tire pressure so that it's also going to gain you rotation, give you more rotation in those corners. In terms of top speed, when you compare minimum tire pressure to maximum tire pressure, right? Minimum on all tires versus maximum on all tires, the benefit is negligible at certain tracks. Uh, Monza it's only 1 or 2 kph loss but still you want to be running it at maximum any bit of top speed that you get any bit of rotation in high speed you get is a lot more time in slow speed you can do a lot of things with your throttle with your brakes to gain time so my advice well it's the advice that everyone's giving in the community as well run maximum tire pressures for the race and uh if it's for some reason overheating in your practice races then you can always reduce it by one psi first and see from there on all right so there you go that is how you want to be setting up your tire pressures and let's go over the whole thing in a quick in a quick way to give you a preset uh, a new preset that i will recommend for you for any track for the wings just take 
whatever you have in time trial or whoever gives you another setup you can always steal their wing levels uh, that's usually a good level start off if you need a little bit more stability in the car increase the rear wing or reduce the front wing um, that's going to stabilize the car a little bit chances are if you get an e-sport setup or you get the time trial setup it is quite over theory so you can do these changes right reduce the front or increase the rear or you can do both to stabilize the car all right and uh, based on that make sure you have at least 10 to 15 wing gap certain tracks you can go up to 20 or 25 very extreme and uh, let's move on to transmission start off with 80 50 100 on all tracks in qualifying for the race you can reduce it maybe to 90 or 80 engine braking if you want it to be a little bit safer especially in uh, tracks like uh, monza uh, las vegas miami where there's pretty much all brakes brakes and brakes uh, if you're afraid of uh, locking up the rear or you have trouble with uh, controlling the car under the brakes for some reason you can reduce the engine braking to help you out a little bit but otherwise keep it at 100 off throttle start off with 50 if you want more rotation in your setup you can start lowering it i'd say go down by 5 or 10 at the time you can even go all the way down to 10 and test that out and see if you're already at 57 brake bias 100 percent engine braking and you're still locking up then you can increase your off throttle a little bit to uh, give you uh, less locking up on the rear or eliminate the lockups on the rear so start off at 50 and on throttle i'd say somewhere around 70 to 80 actually uh, i'll take back my words 70 to 80 is actually okay for the race but for qualifying you want to run as much as possible in high speed corners uh, long high speed corners or whichever corner that is fast right uh, you can actually drop your on throttle to around 70 or 80 so it rotates more coming out of hairpin or slow corners you want to run it as high as possible so you get better traction in those corners so if you want to adjust it from corner to corner go for it if not leave it as it is suspension geometry all the way minimum good to go if you need a little bit of stability in the car you can increase your rate to in if you need a little bit more front end pointiness which i don't know why you would this game is already very pointy but if we need it you can always increase your front toe a little bit right uh, you don't have to uh, play around with the camber here because uh you know reducing the camber it's going to give you less rotation that's not a good thing here and uh, no amount of downforce is going to help you out if you reduce your camber so keeping your camber at minimum is actually pretty good and allows you to run a little bit less wings here because uh, the tire is going to give you more grip anyway suspension start off with 41 1 suspension and uh, along with that go with 25 60 ride height and uh, if you need a little bit more rotation in slow speed corners or a little bit more turn in on braking right you can reduce the front suspension by one or two clicks not more than that maybe three at most uh, while keeping the ride height the same but if you feel like you want to try to increase the top speed of the car you can try lowering the front ride height this may also give you better con uh, better cornering performance if you do not bottom on anywhere else if you notice you are losing time in certain corners when you reduce your ride height that means you are bottoming out so either you increase the suspension stiffness or you go back up on the front ride height you can go up in one click two clicks it's going to make quite noticeable difference same for the rear ride height but in opposite so if you notice like on the exit of corners uh, you're not getting uh, traction in slow speed corners you can reduce your rear ride height whereas in high speed corners you will notice that when you are on lower rear ride height it tends to slide a little bit so if you want the car to be a little bit more stable in high speed then you can increase your rear ride height so hence why i'd say 25 60 is a, it's a good starting point right um and go on from there on so don't go any lower than 20 on the front in any track and don't go any higher than 70 on any track except maybe singapore or monaco where you can actually go up to 80 because you're already running maximum front and rear wing and you need rotation from some source which is going to come from the rear right height and the front right height combination so we'll talk about that in those tracks whenever we get there right and brakes oh sorry i forgot about the anti-roll bus 
start off with 2115 and if you are okay with it you can go all the way up to 21 anti roll bar it's going to give you a little bit more rotation if you can control it so good for you good for your lap time 100% brake brake pressure sorry my words all the time and brake front brake bias at 57 56 for heavy braking and then uh, 55 54 53 it can all work for light braking or just tap on the brakes very quickly and uh yeah for the rain you just want to increase it one click from whatever you're running so if you're running 56 for heavy braking in turn one and monza you could run 57 or 58 in the wets so it's going to prevent your left rear from locking up <clears throat> and tire pressures maximum all the way uh in case it's overheating you can reduce it so there you go tldr is done i hope you enjoy this setup ladies and gentlemen cars um you know there's been mixed criticism about this game so far but uh i'm here doing my job to help you out with this game if you're loving the sport you know welcome to f1 if you're loving the game welcome to f124 and if you're new to my channel well welcome to the sing racing channel and i'll invite you to my discord server as well i'll see you there uh till then take care stay safe and i'll see you very soon for the first setup and track guide which is going to be spa in a day or two from now so take care everyone stay safe and ciao